is in love with you. Leonardo's daughter, God forbid. God forbid it should be otherwise. That she is worthy, I know. That I love her, I feel. That I do not feel why she or any other woman should be loved, or know why they should be worthy, is my opinion. And I will live a bachelor. Ere I die, I will see thee pale with love. With anger, sickness, or with hunger, my lord, but not with love. In the meantime, go tell the art I will not fail at him, I fly, the herald of your will. He both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. Uh, when I know him, I'll tell him what you say. Come, we must follow the leaders. Prince is fool. It may be I go under that title because I am merry. Or rather, it is Beatrice that so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged. Now, Signor, where is Cordo? Did you see him? I found him here, melancholy. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the good will of this young lady. Beatrice had a quarrel with you. The gentleman she danced with says he is much wronged by you. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, and that I was duller than a great Thor. I would not marry her. All disquiet and perturbation follow her. And look, here she comes. Will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I will go on the slightest errand to the Antipodes, rather than hold three words conference with this harpy. <laughs> Do you have no employment for me? None, but to desire your good company. Oh, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. But would laugh at such shallow follies as love. And now he has become the scorn of his own argument by falling in love. One woman is kind, another is fair, another is virtuous. But till all three graces be in one woman, I shall not be so converted. The prince must you love. I will hide. This can be no trick. <laughs> The convents are sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me! Why? It must be requited. I hear how I am censored. They say from her. They say too that she will rather die than give any sign of her affection. They say the lady is fair. Tis truth I can bear the witness. And virtuous tis so, I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me. By my troth, tis no addition to your hate, nor no great argument to her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance of some odd quips and bits of humour smattered upon me, but doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth, that he cannot endure in his age. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. By this day, here comes Beatrice. She's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure, then, in the message? Yea, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point, and choke a door with all. You have no stomach, Signor? Fare you well. <coughs> Against my will, I am sent to you bid come into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. And as for, I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me, that's as much to say, any pains I take for you are as easy as thanks. If I do not pity her, I am a villain. <coughs> as arrogant, I will be so bold as to ask Benedict for his company, as he is all mirth. Gallants, I am not as I have been. He is in love, and I know who loves him. I want one that knows him not. Old oh, Signor, walk aside with me. I must speak words to you which these hobby horses must not hear. Welcome, Signor. You 
are a villain. I guess not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy upon you. Let me hear from you. The God of love that sits above and knows me, and knows me. Ah, oh, I can never show my love in rhyme. I have tried, but I can find no rhyme to lady, but baby. For school, fool. I was not born under a rhyming planet. I came to discover what had passed between you and Claudio. I must tell thee plainly. Claudio undergoes my challenge, and I must shortly hear from him. But pray tell me, for which of my bad parts did thou first fall in love with me? For them all together. But for which of my good parts did thou first suffer love for me? <laughs> suffer love? A good epithet. For I do suffer love indeed. For I love thee against my will. Thou and I are too wise to love peaceably. But tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how are you? Very ill, too. <laughs> I answer that name. What is your will? Do you not love me? Why, no. No more than reason. Do not you love me? Why, then, your uncle and the prince and Claudio were deceived. They swore you did. Do not you love me? Troth, no, no more than reason. Well, then, my cousin. Margaret and Ursula are much deceitful. They swore you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. Ah, oh, tis no such matter. Then you do not love me. No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Oh, come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. I will be sworn that he loves her. Here is a sonnet. Written in his hand, fashioned to Beatrice. <laughs> and here's another. In my cousin's hand, containing her affection unto Benedict. Our own hands against our hearts. Come, I'll take thee for pity. I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I will stop Peace. it. I will stop your mouth. My lord, my lord, my lord! Your brother John is here. 